Welcome once again to Behind the Screen uh, content creation show where I just write community content for the various community content platforms that Onyx Path host. Current season uh, is for the Slurrician Vault, which is for Skylands content. Uh, particularly focused on the Frostlands of Fenrelic release, which was at the tail end of last year and opened up the uh, Arctic northern continent of Fenrelic uh, for community content material. Uh, according to my show notes, this is episode 10. We are nearing the end. The end isn't sort of in sight. I mean, we still have a couple of other things to do after I've done one subclass per uh, class, but there we go. Uh, standard disclaimers that YouTube's probably bored of by now, but um, I, uh, I'm not, I do not work for Ice Path. I do not represent them in an official capacity. I am merely a fan with the platform. All opinions, views, etc. are my own. Uh, I am disabled. I do experience muscle spasming. Um, which can affect the muscles, uh, well, pretty much anywhere in my body, really. Uh, but of importance for this, anything from the shoulders up, uh, and if it affects my, my jaw, my throat, my tongue, um, it can result in uh, some stuttering, some slurring of speech. Uh, and also, sometimes my, sometimes my head can jerk to one side, uh, which can be uh, disquieting to watch. I apologise. I can't do anything about it. I'm not apologising for being disabled. Uh, but I am just apologising if it does make you uncomfortable ahead of time. Um, I do also struggle with multiple trains of thought, so I will try to finish one before going on to the next, but if you raise a pertinent point or ask a question in chat, I will try to acknowledge it as in the side, or as a button clause. Uh, oh, I forgot to turn my closed captions on. Um, let's really quickly do that while I go through the rest of the uh, rest of the spiel. Uh, please do bear with me one second. So uh, I mentioned before I started the YouTube recording uh, that you could be watching this video on demand style, and that is totally true. If you are not a subscriber to the Onyx Path channel on Twitch, um, you have to wait a week to watch the video. Um, and out of respect for that, I also delay these videos going live on my YouTube channel by a week at the minimum. Sometimes I forget to upload them for quite some time, turns out. Uh, sorry, I just need to type in my password to the captioner. Um, so if you do want to watch them like as soon as they've aired or within a... Thanks, Windows. Or within a day of them airing or so, uh, you will need to subscribe to, to twitch.tv slash onyxpath. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube, that link is in the channel description, is in the video description anyway. Uh, a Prime Gaming sub works equally well as a normal subscription, so don't worry if you've got, if you've got a Prime Gaming sub. Uh, it's free for you, free in air quotes. It's free for you to give to a channel, and it's it, you get the same benefits. You get that week of exclusivity, and you get the sweet, sweet emotes. Um, so that's how you watch this after the fact. I'll obviously mention that at the end of the stream, as, as usual. Uh, I always, of course, go through the Monday meeting notes. So uh, again, if you don't know, uh, the Monday meeting notes are a weekly kind of blog post update about the state of the uh, about the state of Onyx Path. Um, the main uh, the main point this week is the ongoing Trinity Trinity Continuum Adventure Kickstarter. Uh, the link is actually in the Monday meeting notes this week, so that is pretty useful. But uh, in case you're not interested in the meeting notes, but just want to go straight to the Kickstarter and donate, there is the link for the Kickstarter, or donate, back, sorry. Uh, about three weeks into it, um, if you want to punch Nazis as a super-powered pulp hero in like the 30s, this is the game for you. Uh, use a story path, so easy to use, easy to pick up and learn. Um, but yeah, it's just super-powered punching, super-punching uh, super Nazis, there we go. Full of... Pulp tropes like dirigibles and car chasers, gratuitous explosions, dinosaurs, lost ruins and jungles, larger than life villains, all of the good stuff that we like. Or not all the good stuff that some people like. You don't have to like it, obviously. That is the joy of the hobby. There is a game for everyone. Um, but there's a bit, there's a breakdown of the art the art on the um, uh, front cover, which is really interesting to read if, like me, you have no idea about art and what goes into art. Uh, and, and why certain choices are made. Uh, discussions are still going on about the about the content for Onyx Path 2020 online con. Uh, that reminder that will be mid June. 
beyond the fact that stuff is being talked about, that's all the news there is on that. And there is currently a sale on Drive Through RPG for Scion, uh, both Mage Awakening and Ascension, and uh, Changeling the Lost and Changeling Dreaming, as there is an Urban Fantasy sale on, on Drive Through RPG. So if you're looking for any of those PDFs and want to get them cheap, now is your chance, or cheaper, I guess. Um, the schedule I allow to do in the post roll and the pre roll for that matter. Obviously, there's the usual links to actual plays and interviews and podcasts. Uh, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Uh, on sale this week, a jump start for Geist the Sin Eater Second Edition. There's a segue here. Um, Geist the Sin Eater Second Edition. Uh, Geist the Sin Eater is, is where you play someone who has died. And must now help defend. Must now help ghosts pass on and defend them from otherworldly threats, underworldly threats perhaps even. Um, also on Wednesday, community content art assets for Pirates of Pugmire will be reaching Canis Minor. So if you want to do some Pirates of Pugmire stuff for Pugmire, you can use the art anyway. You can. I believe you could do Pirates of Pugmire themed stuff anyway. But the art is now making it to Canis Minor, so you can use it. Canis Minor, for those who don't know is the Pugmire equivalent of the Slurician Vault, or the Story Path Nexus. Um, but that does bring me neatly to a slight segue. Uh, this is Jumpstart Month every... Uh, well, on Onyx Path and Plastic Age Plays, uh, slash Travis, uh, are trying to get as many actual plays of Onyx Path jump Jumpstarts as possible going this month. You might have seen them in the post-roll or the, if you watched the, my last stream or the pre-roll, if you were here for the start of this stream or elsewhere on Onyx Path um, media. Uh, there is a there was a graphic on the last Monday meeting note, I believe, but I think it's not on this one. Uh, anyway, yeah, trying to do all of the all of the jump starts and um, get them played, which, you know, there is a decent number of jump starts, it turns out. Oh, there is a graphic now. I found it. Uh, I am actually breaking my fortnightly schedule. What? Yes, that is legal. I can appear twice in two weeks on this channel. Would you? Well, three times in three weeks, I guess, technically. Would you believe? Uh, same time, same same slot, uh, Tuesday, 9 a.m. EDT. Um, but assuming enough sacrifices can be made, I mean, players can be found, uh, I will be running uh, the Pugmire jumpstart, The Secret of Vincent's Tomb on the channel. Uh, Pugmire is... A game that uses a very streamlined, I was about to say simplified, but it, it's it's not precisely simplified. Let's say streamlined uh, version of the 5e OGL, which I'll explain all of that in a moment, um, to, uh, in which you play as, as or Pugmai specifically, you play as Awakened Dogs. Humanoid dogs that can use weapons, cast spells and whatnot. Uh, set sometime in the far distant future where man has failed and our best friends are have inherited the earth and all 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 pokemon player characters are haunted by the eternal question of are you a good dog um so hopefully we'll have at least one good dog in that player party hopefully but that's the jump star i'm running that's next tuesday the 20th of april um at 9 a.m edt uh and then some more project update stuff at the bottom uh is there anything really for Scarredlands? I didn't notice it. Just scrolling quickly. Uh, yeah, not really. Not so much. Um, but also this week, uh, 20 years ago yesterday, was the um, licensing announcement for the Hunter video games. Uh, tomorrow is the sixth anniversary for the cancellation of the um, World of Darkness MMO, but also 12th, 12th anniversary of the fourth edition Creature Collection for the Scarredlands. Uh, April 15th is one year since Dystopia Rising came out, and Sunday, April 18th, is 14 years since Scion for Hero 1st Edition, which is absurd. Anyway, so that's all of the Monday meeting notes and the jump starts and everything. Uh, I believe that covers my intro section, of the, my start of show notes. Yes, on to the recap. Uh, so throughout the show, please do feel free to ask any questions about running tabletop role-playing games, or specifically Onyx Path role-playing games, or about writing content for them, creating content for them, whether homebrew for no one but your table to use, or for distribution through Solution Vault, Canis Minor, Story Path Nexus, Storytellers Vault, which is a White Wolf thing, not Onyx Path. Oh, a Paradox thing. Oh, no, White Wolf, I think. Paradox. One of the two. Um, I feel like there's another one I'm missing, but I could just be wrong about that. 
through any of the community content sites anyway. Uh, please feel free to ask. This is a community focused show. The content creation is something merely to talk about while um, there are no questions to answer. Uh, but so far, I've been addressing how one can take the narrative of a, uh, specifically for the moment, anyway, subclass and convert it into mechanics. Um, I have a lot of experience with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Um, so making material using the OGL, which again, for those who don't know, OGL equals Open Gaming License. Uh, it is a legal document that allows you to use the contents of the SRD, the System Reference Document, specifically the D&D 5e SRD. I mean, there are other SRDs out there, um, but the D&D 5e SRD, um, System Reference Document, to make your own games using the core rules of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but with your own flavor. So obviously, Skyldlands is, uh, is an interpretation of this that doesn't do much to alter the core rules, whereas Pugmire changes quite a bit. Um, some some streamlining, some just throwing out entirely uh, to produce a, a very distinct feeling game. Um, but I'm I'm trying to walk you through each of my decision making processes about how I how about how I specifically. There are many ways to do this. This is not a like you must do it the same way I do. Show um, this is just to get you thinking to present an approach, not the approach. Um, to present an approach uh, to writing community content. I misspelled Sorcerer in my notes. I always spell it with an, with two O's. It is two E's instead. Um, but so far, as you can hopefully see, I tried to zoom in as far as I can um, for uh, people on mobile. Um, but so far, we have created uh, one subclass for each of the core classes. So. There are 12 core classes for those who are curious. Um, we've created 10 so far. Um, those of you who are thinking, hey, this is the 10th episode, have you created 10 so far? Uh, to begin with, I was extremely productive and I got through two in one episode, well, like one and a half in one episode. That kind of fell off um, just as things went on. Um, it just depends entirely on how much I write and how difficult I make the mechanics to pass into game text. Um, but we've had just as a very swift recap, uh, barbarians who benefit from working with others, bards who are very much about self-discipline, clerics who are entirely into the fact that, entirely into the idea that the community is is the best defense against anything, uh, druids connected to the aurora, fighters who are basically Batman, not really, uh, fighters who excel at night fighting, stealth-based fighters, um, monks who are adept at dealing with privation, uh, dealing with the privation that the uh, arctic wastes causes and uh, provoking it and, and weaponizing it. Uh, paladins, all about bringing light and knowledge to the dark places of the world. Literally in this case, as Fenrilic is an arctic continent, it has a sixth, mo sixth month long night. Uh, also, there are not many paladins on uh, Fenrilic, so I, was, I tried to figure out a reason, an oath, that a paladin could feasibly take, that would take them to Fenrilic. Um, I mention this occasionally, but uh, within the lore of Scarred Lands, the Divine War didn't actually reach Fenrilic that badly. Um, Gelsbad obviously is trashed, but Fenrilic itself was largely untouched. So um, I was trying to figure out why a traditionally divine class, and Paladins do are technically divine spellcaster, but a traditionally divine class would be there. So I thought they're, just, they're taking light and knowledge to somewhere that may not have it. Uh, a ranger focused on thematically hunting scarai but in real in in reality uh any dangerous prey uh a rogue that is excels as a tracker uh a sorcerer whose magic comes from the wilderness itself from what for whatever reason and you can probably tell from the from the heading that you can read that today's subject is a scarai patron warlock uh those who do not know um scarai are a race of uh, I think they have the keyword monstrosity. Hello, Zach rules. Uh, where did my where did my thing go? There we go. Uh, monstrosity. Yeah, Scarai are a uh, like a, a hybrid race of human and scorpion. Uh, they are psionic. Um, that's really all you need to know. 
uh, they reproduce oh, also they reproduce asexually and inject hosts with larvae which then kind of take over the host and um, you know the host becomes a, a new one a, a, a new scare uh, which is body horror enough thank you very much um, but uh, some uh, so the narrative that I'm working with to tie that to a subclass Sometimes, whether through bad luck or intentional experimentation, adventurers return from the arctic wastes with immature, with immature scare gestating within them. For those who take action in time, whether are chemical, herbal, or magical, the immature scare can offer an easy route to power. With the parasite killed, or rendered otherwise inert, its psionic potential is passed on to its host, the hybrid of scare and host produces a being of great psionic potential, so much so that many ill-fated adventurers intentionally attack scare forces in the hopes of being implanted. Many of those who survive this process whisper of a being that haunts in their dreams, a scarai of immense age and power that does not take kindly to Intersopers usurping its gifts. So, usually, the, uh, I guess we should ha have a brief discussion of the narrative of the Warlock class itself. Um, oh, uh, standard, st standard thing, uh, ignore any names right now. So the patron feature names are entirely placeholder, as is the packed name. Um, and this packed text, to be fair. Uh, these are all related to when I uh, did this for, on my own Twitch channel for my Patreon, um, when I made subclasses on stream. Um, I just I literally just copied the tables over uh, and, and never got around to re removing the text. Uh, so technically, a, a Warlocks don't get a third level class feature, but the patron feature, but I, uh, I, I like making a pact as well. Uh, so the, narr the narrative of the Warlock, uh, the Warlock is a spellcaster uh, that differs from every other spellcaster. Uh, rather than learning magic, spontaneously um, developing magical talent, uh, getting magic from the gods, or like connection to the natural world, the Warlock is someone who has made a bargain, made a bargain with another being for magical power. Sorry, I got a bit thirsty. Um, so, uh, I won't really go into the narrative consequences of that, but you can, if, if you're running a game with a warlock, that's basically the play essentially giving you permission to bring their patron in as, as a factor in the game. Um, but usually it's a, like, traditionally it's a, you either are dying and they make the offer and you, uh, agree to it to get power, or you seek them out and you know, do stuff in return for your power. Uh, obviously, the Skarai patron in this in this case, it isn't that. It is you have subjected yourself to something and taken the power by force, um, or trickery, or some other means. Uh, so I'm 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 going to maybe try and work something in around that. Maybe through invocation stuff. Maybe through having some class features be a bit double edged. Like, yeah, sure, this is your power, but it. You have taken it by force. It wasn't even given to you. So here's the downside to it. Or well, not necessarily like a downside downside, because uh, why would you do it if that's the case? But uh, a a drawback, let's say. Um, so uh, I have my PDFs open. I believe I have all of the ones open I need. I did not find the page I need. Gosh darn it. I thought I'd been really good and prepared everything. Uh, yep. Oh, right. Warlocks get expanded spells. Oops, I did not prepare any expanded spells for Warlocks. Ah, oh, this will be fine. Uh, Warlocks also. Uh, I, I'm, I made mention of this. They are an unusual spellcaster. Yeah, they need a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth level expanded spell spell list. Uh, okay. Uh, they are an unusual, an unusual spellcaster in that... They don't have, um, is it the capital? Hang on one second. Uh, they do not have a large number of spells. Uh, unlike, you know, full casters who have a, a, a uh, wide pool of spells to draw from and a large number of spell slots, uh, or even half casters for that matter. Halfcasters get more spell slots than Warlocks. Uh, warlocks get, instead of spell casting as a class feature, Warlocks get packed magic. 
Um, they only have a maximum of two spell slots, which uh, go up to a maximum of fifth level. Um, but they always cast their spells at the highest possible level because they only have the two spell slots. Um, they do learn spells of a higher level than fifth. Uh, they just have a class feature that interacts with those in a different way. I won't go into that here unless someone specifically asks. Um, actually, I might touch that on a later. Touch on that in a later later. 10th or 14th class feature. Uh, but the uh, the important thing is, unlike every other spellcaster, apart from wizards and specific druids, um, and specific clerics, actually, with Tasha's, uh, warlocks get their spell slots back on a short rest rather than the long rest. So, yeah, you only have two spell slots. Um, yours, there are also invocations that allow for at-will casting of certain spells. Uh, but, uh, sorry, I, I need to find the... Uh, where's, the where's the paladin? Uh, there we go. Oh wow, that's uh, that needs changing. Ooh, that was that was almost bad. That would have had to been picked up in second draft. Uh, whoop. Uh, yeah. So they are limited to two spells, plus invocations and hand traps, but. They get access to them. They re refresh more quickly than other classes. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, what does this PDF just call them? You know what? I'm just going to copy the text. That is way easier. Or well, far easier, I should say. Uh, is it Control Shift V? Yeah, it's Control Shift V for without formatting. And then, of course, unfortunately, I have to do this manually. Whoops, so easy. I don't know why I deleted instead of just putting a space in. Fortunately, the hard work is done for me, and I will explain why uh, in but a moment. Please, Google, give me the autocorrect thing. Give me the spell check. Okay, I'll do it manually, you coward. There we go. Uh, so this needs to be warlock level. Oh, it doesn't even need to be warlock level, right? It's just spell level. Yep. And that goes there. That goes there, that gets replaced by fourth, this is second, and this is first. Okay, bear with me with this, I completely forgot what has got expanded spells, uh, expanded spell lists, um, so I do need to, to cross-reference what level spell each spell is. Uh, so if you say something in chat, I'm, I will be temporarily covering the ch uh, my view of chat up uh, with the PDF with the spells in. But it does mean that I can easily do this. So, uh, detect thoughts and suggestion, I believe, are second level spells. Hey, move faster. Uh, yes, so. Uh, for those who are interested, the um, you may encounter some issues with community content, especially if you are familiar with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition from more than just the SRD or basic rules. Uh, the SRD does not have all of the spells in it. It only has most of the spells in it. So sometimes you might think that you can totally, you can use a spell um, and you can't. Occasionally, spells will be, uh, have a different name this is most often in the case of spells that use a wizard's name, uh, so like Lehman's Tiny Hut, Nistel's Magic Aura. Uh, they are simply Tiny Hut and Magic Aura, respectively, in these examples, because the wizard, it, the wizard name itself is uh, product identity for Wizards of the Coast. Um, I believe Charm Person is a first level spell. So, as I said, happily, a lot of this work is done for me uh, because Skarai are actually um, spellcasters. They have an innate 
Psionic ability to cast certain spells. So all I'm doing is going through their stat blocks in the Frostlands of Fenrilink book, looking at what spells they have access to, and adding them to the Scarai spell list. Uh, this won't work entirely because they'll have... Um, whoops, nope. Uh, they'll have spells... They won't have spells up to a certain, past a certain point. Or they might only have like one first level spell. And then I'll have to get creative and actually go through spell lists. But there we go. Uh, I believe telekinesis is a higher level spell. Oh no, it's a fifth level spell. Hell yeah. Or heck yeah, I should say, sorry. Uh, lowercase t, keep the formatting the same between all uh, between all products. Quick, ch quick chat. Quick check of chat, we're all good there. Uh, I've not missed anything so far. Uh, what other spells do Scarai have? Uh, where's the mature Scarai? That's a, I've got those. Uh, that sort of stuff in this book. Uh, I will not be giving dominate person to a player character. Dominate monster might be nice though. Uh, well, let's see. Go up. Uh, dominate person is a fifth level spell. Sure, why not? I can always. This this is definitely first draft. I can always change it if I feel like changing it. Um, they don't. Scarra, I don't specifically have Dominate Beast. But I'm going to include it. It's a fourth level spell. So. so, immediately, if you want to link something to a creature that has spellcasting abilities, just let that thing learn the spells that that creature has. Uh, those are like six level spells. So that's four. Fine. Expeditious Retreat doesn't really make sense. Neither does Shield all that. Well, I guess Psionic Shield. Shield is a first level spell? Oops. Sorry. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm misclicking frantically. Uh... So, so far we've got third and fourth level spells missing. Uh, quick check of chat. Flames Rising, when you choose two spells, do you learn more on the SRD or the Skyline's Player Guide when selecting? Um, largely, it depends, uh, Flames Rising. Um, if uh, I, I generally go for SRD material uh, as like a, um intro to idea, because everyone can access the SRD for free, um, but... Uh, whereas it might be entirely possible that one player in the group has the Scarlet player guide, uh, but I, definitely if there's nothing in the SRD that doesn't feel right, I'll go to the, the Scarlet guide. Uh, also, hi Polo Craft T Polo Craft FF, how are you doing? Um, I know it's, it's it's not great practice. It's also just habit. I keep forgetting. Like I have the player's guide. It's always open when I'm doing these shows. Uh, I'm just not as familiar with the spells. Um, but when I go through second drafting this, I, m I will probably look through the player's guide and see if there are any spells that, that fit better um, with with the uh, the class. I mean, I've included some. What level is this? Oh, there we go. Uh, that does deserve a capital because that is a person's proper name. There's one from the player guide. Uh, largely though, it's entirely up to how you feel about the spell. It makes sense to you do the same with a character and piece of your new adventure. Heck yeah. I mean, obviously, Scarlet uh, Scarlet uh, books, books, spells from the Scarlet Lands Player's Guide are very heavily flavoured for Scarlet Lands, um, and therefore will, uh, like, convey more of the flavour of the game. Um, uh, everything I do is generally with an eye towards... Uh, accessibility primarily 
and ease of use for people who may not be familiar with it. Uh, what was I doing? Right, the level spells. Um, and for me, because the SRD is free, um, and because not everyone on the table might have the have the player's guide, obviously copyright theft not okay. Just want to throw that one out there. Copyright theft is not okay. Um, do not I do not condone it or encourage it. Um, so I make the assumption that like people are shown what they need to see to make a character or use the character, but just to cut down on things being on books being flipped through uh, and to keep play moving. That is my um, initial reaction to it. Uh, those aren't th none of those are third level spells. So uh, what was it? Where was it? Empathy of the Faceless One and Empathy of the Faceless One, Fracture and Rupture. I think those are high level spells, but I could be wrong. Uh, right, it's under Folk of Fenrelic. We uh, Spells, there we go. Oh, Empathy of the Faceless One is a fourth level spell. Okay. Fracture is a third level spell. Fracture is always going in. If I odds are, if I have a, a spare third level spell slot, and any tangential link to the fracture spell, I'm going to include it. It's a great spell. Uh, fracture being in the Frostlands Fenrelic book itself. Uh... Yeah, that's a fourth level spell. Uh... I think Dalmar's Telekinetic Blast fits more with, on the one hand, weaponizing psychic potential, and on the other hand, like the mind control side of things. Not mind control ex explicitly, of course. Charm person is not mind control, but um, empathy of the faithless one is more like sharing pain. Which totally has its place, but, uh, sorry, one second. I feel like having a very strong thread in the spells of either weaponized psychic potential or, you know, utilitarian psychic potential rather than the weird hybrid of the two. So raw force versus more subtle insidiousness. Uh, that does lead me to the problem of I need a third level spell, though. Um, let's go back to this player guide. See if there's anything else in the Scarred Lands player guide that that would make sense. I have a possibility right now. I'm not going to take a spell from the Warlock spell list, that's just silly. Um, okay, let's see if the spell idea works. Yes, it does. Okay, so... That's all that sorted. Do apologize. As I say, I completely forgot that Warlocks get the expanded spell list. Um, and then usually like two other things at first level. I think. Oops. Yeah, except one of them is going to be a bonus counter for this one. Uh, so to, to, to let you into my reasoning for the expanded spell list before I continue on. Um... Charm person reinforces the uh, the telepathy aspect of the Scarai. Also, charm person is a spell that Scarai have. Uh, shield is the first step upon weaponizing your psychic potential. Again, it's a spell that certain Scarai have. Detect thoughts and suggestion, going back to the charm person side of things. It's a subtle application. Uh, again, something Scarai have. Uh, animal spy and fracture. Um as, quite frankly, mind control is problematic um, on sapient creatures uh, and 
first level does give you dominate person, which is, you know, a thing. Um, Animal Spy is the first step on that. So Animal Spy lets you compel a creature to spy for you, essentially. Uh, so it's 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 an extension of Charm Person and Suggestion, but uh, applies to animals. Uh, fracture just allows you to magically fracture bones. That's it. It's what it says on the tin, really. It's great. It's it's brutal. It's scarred lands, in a nutshell. Uh, dominate beast. Step up from animal spy. Step down from dominate monster. Dolomar's telekinetic blast. Again, it's what it sounds like. It's a telekinetic blast. Um, wait, where's the thing for specifics? Uh, it is for ease of reference Psychic Fireball but it does false damage so there we go that's a very reductive explanation of the spell but that's that's what it is um, I'm going to put that there now uh, Telekinesis is exactly what it says on the tin and then Dominate Person is like the natural evolution of, of Charm Person and Suggestion it's just it's a fifth level spell uh, so those that's my reasoning behind those spells. You've got the the mind, the mental aspect, and the physical force aspect. Where possible, I have taken spells from the Scarai, because I I reason that's what that the Scarai would be able to gift you. Um, and then expanded spell list, uh, bonus cantrip. I think it's only one. The celestial gets. Sorry, one second. Ah, right. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I'm just gonna check something. Uh, there we go. Are there any appropriate cantrips? I don't think so. No, not really. Okay. Uh, so, bonus cantrip. Um, I mean, I guess I could do bonus cantrips. Yeah, we'll do bonus cantrips. I'll, I'll go the original route I was thinking of uh, way back when. Uh, and then something else. Uh, so, what else would Scarai give you when you are implanted with its... Th you know what? My original plan... I was going to talk about this, uh, especially when you're influenced by a monster uh, in your in your subclass design. Uh, constantly re refers to the refer to the monster or the creature, I should say. Uh, and fortunately, um, the Frostlands book does include several Skerai stat blocks, starting with the image of Skerai. Right, that was what I was going to do. Mind blast. A cone attack. Gotcha. That was it. Um, so, I'm not going to call it Mind Blast. Uh, let's call it... Uh, I mean, I could, I guess, call it Mind Blast. Um, but I feel like call it, naming it after the feature is a bit aggressive because it's going to be slightly different because it's a player character option rather than a creature option. Uh, let's go with Mind Lance. I don't know if that's a natural thing, but there we go. Well, Mind Lance implies surgical precision. At this point, it wouldn't be. Um, shatter Mind. Just overwhelming force, because you aren't trained at this. Uh, this will be Pact of the Bond. That is what it is. We'll explain that when I get there. Um, hey, Dr. Throp, how are you doing? Uh, not just the Skerai patron. Oh, just not just the Skerai, that's fine. Uh, okay, so bonus contract and Shatter Mind. 
find his cantrips. Hey, hey chat, if you want a drinking game, take a shot every time I make a typo. You'll be dead by the end of the stream. Good, good, how are you? I'm okay. Standard streaming anxiety. But there we go. Uh, vicious Mockery. Mage Hand. Uh, sh shatter Mind. Um, right. I don't think giving a, pl a level 1 character access to an ability that can stun is a great idea, if I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, hang on. I'm just going to open a web page with the conditions on it, because something tells me I'll be referring to them a decent amount today. Uh, would anything else make more sense than stun? This is where a condition staggered would be nice. I have to make my own condition. I've did that before. That's why I'm doing great. Why, thank you. I've been doing this for... 40 episodes now and streaming on my own channel for nearly two years year and a half no two years and i'm still very very anxious where did the uh where did the monk go can i reuse the monk's condition probably not uh focused let's just make a condition i mentioned this when i when i uh Mentioned the monk. Try not to do this. It's not great. It's not a good idea. But sometimes the game just doesn't have what you want it to do. And if you're going to keep referring back to something, you may as well uh, uh, clarify it. Uh, this is essentially what I wish the confusion spell would do. Um, A, mo uh, a staggered speech a staggered creature's speed is reduced by half um, and it may only use an action or a bonus action on its turn or on their turn. They may not use Reactions. It's not quite stun, because stun also gives you like advantage to hit them and all of that stuff. It's just distracted, off balance. Uh, again, I wish this is what the confusion spell had done, because confusion is a great idea for a spell. It just, in practice, slows the game down so much. If you guys don't sound stuff on this channel, I have the Origin Hero books and the Kickstarter. I don't actually get a game happening yet, so it'd be cool to see in action. Uh, I feel like I should promote myself in this instance um please do please do give me one second to uh stroke my own ego uh the short answer is yes there is there is some stuff on this channel um where is that playlist uh your videos nope i should have gone to playlists um there is regular Scion stuff on the channel, actually. If you go to the Videos tab, you'll be able to see past uh, Scion streams. Um, specifically... Uh, hang on, I can tell you. Uh, where's my text thing? Uh, where is it? There is a regular game on Wednesday evenings, 9pm EDT, that's Scion. Uh, and occasional kind of other games, other Scion games do pop up. Uh, please, I want to open the play. I want to see the videos in the playlist, YouTube. Uh, I'll just drop the playlist in chat, to be fair. The first three videos of this playlist on my channel are a Scion actual play. Uh, I made a, a, an, introductory, an introductory adventure on this channel, and just over a year ago... Uh, when when lockdowns when lockdowns first started happening, uh, I was lucky enough to run it on the channel. So the first three three episodes of that playlist, th first three videos of that playlist are are that introductory uh, origin adventure. Um, and then as I say, there's regular there, there is a regular weekly game, and 
Uh, if you go to the videos tab, I believe there'll be some promotional videos for the last Kickstarter that ran for Scion. I think there's um, a Mythos game and there might be a Dragon game as well, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, actually, while I'm thinking about it... Um... I'm totally abusing my ability as a mod to post links, by the way, for this. Uh, is there just a Scion playlist? Yeah, there are. So if you go to the... Um, uh, that's the Onyx Paths YouTube channel. Uh, and if you go if you go through the playlists, they do have some Scion playlists of material that's appeared on stream on the channel as well. Um, as a masks of the mythos was a uh, was done using pre pre release material from a recent Kickstarter, and uh, it doesn't look like there was a dragon game. Oh, demigod! There was a demigod game uh, that uses pre release material as well, because those books are not out yet. But I hope that helped. Um, obviously, do with the, do with that information as you will. Uh, one target stagger. Damage. That is my note for that. That is the high spell psychic for that class feature. Uh, Pact of the Bond. So I mentioned that um, warlocks are. I am happy to help. Uh, I mentioned. Oh, uh, if you want to watch any of the most recent videos uh, on on Twitch, you will have to be a subscriber. There is a week's exclusivity period for Twitch subscribers for the video on demand stuff. Uh, but everything is available after that week's up, so you don't. As long as you can wait a week, you're fine. Um, as I mentioned, uh, warlocks uh, are a class that bargain for their magic, or in this case, take it. Um, but unlike a lot of other classes, actually, I can't think of any other class that does it. Uh, warlocks kind of get two subclasses. You get your patron, which influences spell list and your uh, features. Uh, but you also get a pact, um, which is uh, the way that your kind of, I guess, magic focuses in a way. Hang on. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the SRD explains it far better than I'm doing. So the, the, the patron, for example, in the SRD is the fiend. You make a bargain with a devil. Um... Uh, at third level, your otherworldly patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyal service. And then it's kind of like, this is how you focus your magic and, and what it does. So the SRD gives you the Pact of the Chain, where you learn Find Familiar and basically have a, have, have a magic slave. Uh, Pact of the Blade allows you to magically conjure a weapon. And Pact of the Tome allows you to focus on spellcasting and learn extra spells beyond what you would ordinarily learn. Uh, pacts are not tied to patrons. Any patron can give you any pact. You can use any pact on a patron, depending on how you want to look at it. Said the same thing two different ways there. Well done on redundancies. Um, so, uh, I just like making a pact, uh, a, an extra pact when I make a patron subclass, uh, when, I make pat when I make a patron. Not, uh, usually it is related in some way thematically to the patron. Uh, so this is just Psychic Bond. Um, and a Pax is usually... Uh, usually, in fact, is... A Pax is a single thing. Like, it is a single feature that you get access to at level 3. Um, but what it does do is serve as a prerequisite for Eldritch Invocations, which you can see down here, um, which are how Warlocks get around having so few spell slots um, Eldritch Invocations allow your Warlock to, uh, or uh, a Warlock, um, to cast certain spells at will, to um, learn skills, to gain utility abilities that they ordinarily wouldn't have. And some of them have prerequisites, whether that's just Warlock level, or a specific Pact, or a specific Patron. Um, so the Pact... Gives you one thing, it is a single class feature that you get, but then invocations let you modify that if you wish to. So what I'll probably do 
if I have time today, I might not, is do like three invocations specifically for the Pact of the Bond. But we'll uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, I need to do my I need to continue my breakdown of warlock subclasses to figure out just what I'm working with. Uh, so sixth level fe uh, class features look like they are. Um, Mm, some sort of personal buff. Just checking in the SRD. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of a personal buff, maybe. Uh, so the obvious one here is just resistance to psychic damage. Um, so strengthen. Uh, have I used strengthened mind? I might have done it with the Scar Eye Hunter. I did not. So, uh, what did I do with this? I don't, I don't want to do the same thing as I did up here. Shielded mind. Nope. Trained mind. Proficiency in wisdom saving throws. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, right. Also headings. I need to sort out my headings. Uh, I broke my first rule chat. How dare I? I did not do my formatting. How could I forget to do my formatting? Uh, anyway, uh, that needs an enemy. Strengthened mind, sixth level feature. Obviously, also a lot of uh, any game, uh, writing anything for any game line, where the 5 ESRD, story path, uh, what have you. Storyteller is uh, just intuition. Writing stuff that you take a look at it and you don't go, hmm, that seems quite broken or underpowered. Um, not that 5e is particularly based around balance, because it isn't. Um, and Story Path certainly, ha like, it has guidelines about keeping things in balance, like, you shouldn't go beyond, like, a, a level three enhancement or complication uh, for knacks, gifts, whatever you want to call them. But definitely for me, I start with the narrative, I write the mechanics, and then I look at the mechanics and go, and where possible, find an analogous one and tweak it if necessary, if it seems very different. Uh, I'm with saves. Resistance to psychic damage. I might pull that on wind, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma saves. Possibly, haven't quite decided yet. So that's the uh, that's the that's the personal buff. Tenth level warlock features. What do you have for me, tenth level? Okay, that's what tenth level has for me there. Tenth level's looking like it might be mm, like an improvement on a pre on something that you can do. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that seems like a perfect time to improve Shatter Mind then. Um, I think this is where we get Mind Lance. Tenth uh, level. Because by this point, you're, you know, halfway to your, your maximum level, not maximum, you can play with D&D &D and Scarlet Lands beyond 20th level, but it's not designed for it. Um, so I don't mind having a class feature here that gives you some focus, some specificity. You have trained, you have developed this ability to the level at which you can now use it. Uh, stagger, damage. Um... Probably has a longer duration and more damage. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, you know what? This is this is a stun. Uh, stun and damage, and then maybe if they save against the stun, they're staggered instead. That will make sense. Um, uh, 
uh, if save versus done, staggered instead. Okay, straightforward. The Warlock is a very, in some ways, simple class to write for. They are extremely focused. Um, obviously, these are just notes. When I actually come to writing the uh, the game text, that will probably take the next hour. So, yay. Uh, that's a personal buff once per long rest. That's a buff to ability, and hill through hell just gives you a large amount of damage. Uh, I th I think I think the fourteenth level you get the mind blast. You know what? Let's go back to my base. Let's go back to first principles. Let us look at Skerai. Uh, <sighs> magic resistance, not really. Implantation wouldn't make sense. Innate psionics is what they're doing. Well, actually, magic resistance, maybe. Magic resistance is quite powerful for a play character, though. And again, mind blast is a mass stun effect, and I'm, I'm I don't mind giving a play character the ability to stun one NPC. Per action, but two is a bit much. Uh, what have we got then? This is weaponized psychic potential. Unfocused, focused, or raw, focused. That's more the utility side of things. I don't want to just be, hey, you can cast the spell, but it's psychic. Uh, mostly because that's what the expand spell list is for. Um, I do think it's worth it's worth building on the utilitarian side of things. Oh, uh, I mean these are too good. They build on both sides, but I think. Message, I, is, I, if message is in, even in the SRD, message might be useful and also thematically appropriate. Yeah, message is in the SRD. I couldn't imagine it wouldn't be. Uh, anyway, um, hmm. There's no real telepathy here, although Skerai are telepathic. Could give telepathy at sixth level and replace strength and mind with something else. Shared mind. There we go. Uh, I'll. I will clarify what I mean by limited telepathy when I get to it. Uh, so that's that. So I think that's largely the Skerai mind for useful abilities. Uh, the only one that's left is what I was going to use for the for the pact, not the actual patron thing. So uh probably won't do that. Uh what is it? Telekinesis is covered through Mage Hand and the Telekinesis spell. Oh. 
okay, maybe... Maybe do some skill-based things. Connection to the other. And then I'll pull something out of thin air to, that sounds cool. We don't name it. We'll keep that a mystery. That's something you can discover and play if you want to pursue that. Um... Uh, let's say d4 to charisma check. Well, actually. Uh, d4 to skill checks. Limited uses per day. So, like, drawing upon the knowledge of whatever you are connected to through through the Scarai that you have integrated with. Uh, actually, no, D4 at this level. I'm going to go D6. And then um, do something to gain plus one AC and uh, where's the thing? Where's my thing gone? Where are the scarrow? They have a sting, right? Yeah, they have a sting. Okay, so uh, let's take it from the top, shall we? This seems the easiest way to do it. Uh, I'm just going to, as ever, copy wording. Okay, where is my last bonus spells? Have I done a bonus cantrip before? I think I have, right? Maybe? Nope. Sure did not. Okay. Uh, so, where is that wording? Please give it to me. Again, it's usually worth keeping everything kind of in line with established style guides. So if you can reuse wording from publications, uh, it just makes it easier to use. However, it will not be light in Sacred Flame. Do not think that uh, that's hyphenated because it's split over a line. Uh, you learn the mage hand and the vicious mockery cantrips. Uh, they count as warlock cantrips for you, and they don't count against the number of cantrips known. Additionally, uh, your mage hand. is invisible and you may uh, attempt to cast vicious mockery um, without its verbal component. Vicious mockery only has a verbal com component by the way um, by making a I guess charisma check uh, because that is your spellcasting ability modifier as a warlock. Um, opposed by uh, the highest passive perception score. I need to specify um, who by. Uh, opposed by the creature with the highest passive perception score. Oh, with a DC equal to. There we go. That's better. Uh, with a DC equal to the highest passive perception score of any um, 
non-allied creature within 30 feet. Uh, if you fail, uh, you must use. I guess use is the right word. Complete, let's say. Uh, perform the vocal component. There we go. Morning, Plastic Cage Play slash Travis. How are you doing? How is Reap the Whirlwind going? I meant to ask and completely forgot. Uh, please give it the So, at first level, you'll learn Mage Hand and Vicious Mockery cantrips. They count as Warlock cantrips for you, but they don't count against your number of cantrips known. Additionally, your Mage Hand isn't visible, and you may attempt to cast Vicious Mockery without its verbal component by making a Charisma check with a DC equal to the highest passive perception score of any non-allied creature within 30 feet. If you fail, you must perform the vocal component. Oh, it's nuts. Yep, Death of a Prince will do that. Very good adventure, though. Uh, also at first level. Uh, from first level, uh, you can unleash your psionic potential. Uh, I guess this would be a um, ranged spell attack. Just trying to debate. So, uh, I believe. Hang on, I need to check something in the rules themselves. It's an edge case that rarely comes up, which is why I don't know it off the top of my head. Um. There we go. Yes. So, um, doing a sonic class? Hell yeah, Scare Eye Patron Warlock. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure it. So, this is where I'm coming up, potentially. Uh, ranged attacks in any game using the SRD, in theory at least, specifically in Scarred Lands in this case. Uh, if you make a ranged attack with a creature, uh, a ranged attack with a weapon or spell, with a creature, uh, with an enemy within five feet of you, the attack has disadvantage. Um, so I could say that this is a melee spell attack that happens to have range. To get around that, but equally, this is a unfocused kind of. This is an unfocused blast, rather than a specific application of will. So I think to reflect that, Shatter Mind will be a ranged attack, a ranged spell attack, whereas Mind Lance will be a melee spell attack that happens to have a range. I think that works. I think that's thematically good. I think. Um... Uh, as an action, you may make a... Ranged spell attack against a single creature you can see within 30 feet? Let's say 30 feet. Um, I'm trying to think of the wording. If you hit, there we go. If you hit on a success, I can't think of any examples, and I know there are some. My brain is just whoosh the moment I have to think of it. Uh, I'll come back to it. Um, I'm just going to put on a success. It's just easier. Uh, on a success, uh, the target takes, uh, let's say... So Vicious Mockery does 1d4 damage. So I guess we could scale it with Vicious Mockery. Uh, 1d4 Psychic Damage. 
and is staggered whoops till the start of your next actually this is basically just replacing vicious mockery message it is it also avoids that additionally bit I will, however, steal the wording from Vicious Mockery for the uh, damage die increase. Please. Thank you. Uh, control Shift and V. Whoa, that's without formatting. What's it like with... A, you know what? I don't understand. This is size 11. The SRD is, I've mentioned it a couple of times, the SRD is not well formatted when copying into some into another document. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes you've seen everything runs together, sometimes you get one word per line in a vertical column, it's great. Uh, this features damage. Again, if you can avoid it, try not to create conditions, but if you're going to create conditions, use them in other class features. Otherwise, you're just creating something that you could just say, this happens, rather than this condition happens. Um, probably going to have a stagger effect on the sting as well to reflect being poisoned without being poisoned. Uh, so that's that. Pact of the Bond. Uh, so, again, pacts are not inherently tied to patrons. They're just a way that you can express your magic as a warlock. Uh, when you reach third level, uh, you can form a magical connection. With a willing creature. Awakened animal, awakened tree technically isn't a willing, is a creature. Party member. Uh, at the end of a long rest, uh, choose a willing creature until the end of the next long rest. You may communicate telepathically with that creature. As long as it is within 100 feet of you and can understand one language, at least one language. Those of you in, in the chat who know D&D might be thinking, you know what, this sounds an awfully lot like, find, like the Find Familiar spell, and you'd be completely right with that one. Uh, until the end of the next round, you may communicate telepathically with that creature long distance within 100 feet of you. You can understand at least one language. Uh, I, I'm just going to take the wording from Find Familiar. I'm not even going to try to hide it. I will straight up admit you're turning a party member into a familiar. Sort of. Through the magic of psionic potential slash magic. This is the S's, you fool. Here's where Find Familiar isn't in, isn't in the SRD. Of course it is, but there we go. Uh, where's the thing? There we go. You may communicate telepathically with that creature as long as it's in 100 feet. You can understand at least one language. Um, as an action, you or that creature... Um, Share sensors, I think. Uh, as an action, you may look through that creature's eyes, and that needs an apostrophe. That was almost bad. Peer through their ears. Uh, to cut down on excessive comma usage, 
uh, whilst doing this, you are blinded and deafened to things around your body. And you may cast spells with a range of touch upon them as they are within, uh, let's say 100 feet of you. When you said that we form a magical connection with a creature, then the long rest you may choose a willing creature. Until the end of the next long rest, oh, uh, that doesn't say willing creature, that's just flavor text. Uh, until the end of the next long rest, you may communicate telepathically with that creature as long as it is within 100 feet of you and can understand at least one language. Uh, and as an action, you may look through that creature's eyes and hear through their ears. Whilst doing this, you're blind and deaf to things around your body, and you may cast spells with a range of touch upon them whilst they are within 100 feet of you. Hmm. I know Find Familiar has the thing where you have they have to use a reaction for that. Uh, with a range of self upon them. There we go. This is better. Let's say within 100 feet of you. Uh, if you cast a spell with a range of touch, or, yeah, with a range of touch, let's say. Uh, hang on, I need to check something. Uh, are there melee, melee spell attacks in the uh, player's handbook? You know what? I've got Xanathar's open as well. I know there's one in there. I'm just going to use that one. Yeah, Shocking Grasp in this SRD, right? Whoops. I think it's a range of touch. Yeah, it is. Cool. If you cast a spell with a range of touch and a bonded creature... Gosh, this is really clunky wording. You know what? I am simply going to take the wording from Fine Familiar and we'll leave it at that. So that needs to be size 11. This is way longer and more complicated than I expected it to be, if I'm being honest. Uh, finally, when you cast a spell with a range of touch, your um, the bonded creature, not your, you don't own them. They are a creature within their own rights. The bonded creature can deliver the spell as if it had cast the spell. Hydrate, uh, Phantom Virus, you are 100% correct. Thank you for reminding me. Side note, I'm really happy that um, Channel Point Redemptions are visible in chat. Otherwise, I would never be able to see them unless I guess I turned on mod view. Unless I can only see them because I'm a mod, which might be possible. Uh, they must be within 100 feet of you and they must use their reaction to deliver the spell when you cast it. If the spell requires an attack, attack like that. There we go. Uh, for invocations, I'll probably have one that gives you, like, you can cast a spell with a maximum range of this through the, the uh, bonded creature. Do you cast great water? Heck yeah, you do. I, I drink only the hardest of water on this um, when I'm streaming, which is false, actually, because I filter it so it's not hard water anymore. How are we doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Plastic Age Plays might be able to say how um, the channel's doing as a whole better than I can, but this show's doing pretty well. Chat is busy. There are more people here than usual, and I, I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, what level is Shared Mind? Sixth? 
Uh, that's the spell list. Six, yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh, right, so uh, when you reach. That's not high spell reach, though. Sixth level. Uh, your connection to the Skerai within you. Gives you abilities other people find disquieting. I'm going to be honest, like, as a concept, obviously there's the uh, the Great Old One patron also gives you telepathy, but as a concept, having a player character with telepathy is actually kind of weird, if you, if you think about it on balance, and it would certainly be uncomfortable the first couple of times. Um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, you have, or you gain, resistance to psychic damage, and advantage uh, on wisdom saving throws. Uh, a note here, uh, I do not believe warlocks gain proficiency in wisdom saves. Could be wrong. I will check. Oh, they do. Cool. So there we go. Where's my charisma saves? I, for some reason, thought it was dexterity and charisma. I do not know why. Uh, so this is going to make the warlock basically pass every wisdom saving throw. But there we go. Most wisdom saves are related to mind controlling effects. Uh, ooh. Where's the more charisma? I'm not going to do both. So charisma is usually possession. And technically the warlock's already possessed. Whereas, whereas wisdom is like suggestion, compulsion. I think more spells do use wisdom. But narratively and flavor wise I think charisma fits better. Because it's harder to possess someone if they're already quote unquote possessed. I'm going with Charisma. You can't stop me. I'm my own person. Uh, additionally, at the end of a uh, no, let's just have it as an action. Uh, as an action, you can create a Telepathic link with one creature you can see within 20 feet. This link lasts for one hour uh, and allows for two way communication. Uh, you may Create a number of links equal to your proficiency bonus. Right. Right. I need to actually open the, the player's handbook now. Uh, to see how the Awakened Mind does it. Because I want to do it differently, if that makes sense. I don't want to just repeat that class feature. Sorry about the page turning sound. Unless you like it. So let's just telepathically speak to any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. Don't share a language, but it must be able to understand at least one language. So that's just any creature, huh? Let's say equal to half your proficiency bonus. This link lasts for one hour allows for two-way communication oh, and allows for two-way communication but only works whilst both parties are within 20 feet of each other uh let's just use 30. Uh, 
I know that mechanically, or narratively, I should say, narratively, logically, it would make sense to be able to cancel the links at any time. I'm just trying to figure out if that's what I want from this. I think if it were just two-way communication, yes, but as you're sharing your mind, uh, let's say, thing lasts for one hour, allows both parties to um, No, I'm I'm happy with that. I, 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 I like the idea that you're locked into the link. Like, you're strong enough as a psionic character to connect to someone, but it's such a strong connection you can't break it. It just has to naturally expire. It also is a different feel to the Awakened One, uh, Awakened Mind, which is like, you just talk to everyone. Uh, do I give the ability to buff charisma saves through it or wisdom saves because that's a possibility No, what I do is this, in, in fact. Uh, link lasts for one hour. Um, any creature you are linked with can communicate with any other creature you are linked with as long as all parties involved are within 30 feet of each, are within 30 feet of each other. Are within 30 feet of each other or within 30 feet of you? Let's say we, of you. That seems thematically more appropriate. Like, you're the relay, but you don't have to repeat what people are saying to you. I think that's better. I'm still not sure about the... Depends if you're hub or not. Well, that's my point. I I didn't want the character to be the hub. I didn't want, like, everything to have to be repeated. I mean, obviously at the table, you just hand wave it by saying, I repeat that. But I don't like that. I don't like having to do that. That feels like really... Uh, clunky writing, I guess. Anyway... Mind lands. Uh, this was 10th level. When you... Uh, from 10th level, uh, your psionic potential has been refined to the point that you can use it as a precision weapon. As an action... You may. Uh, so I still want Shatter Mind to be viable. So it probably won't do that much damage, but because it goes for a stun instead. Like let's just an attack. So Shatter Mind, let's say attack roll, variant of D4 damage, and stagger. Mind Lance is a saving throw, probably intelligence. Um. On a success, they're staggered. On a fail, they're stunned. And take, you know, some damage. Uh, you may force a creature... Uh, you, you can see within... 30 feet, tying into the telepathy range. Um, to attempt an intelligence saving throw. Uh, 
versus your spell save DC. Uh, they are stunned and take, let's say, 2d10, why not? Psychic damage, uh, stunned until the start of your next turn. Hit 2d10 psychic damage on a success. And are stunned. Staggered until the start of your next turn. Um, I guess it's taking half damage and being staggered in the word of the, uh, in the way of the, the way the book words things. You know what? I'm just gonna reference. I I've seen the the post on Stable House. I will get to it in a moment. I think it was on Stable House. I just saw the colour of the t of the text. Yep. Uh, if, would it surprise anyone that I'm going to Fireball because it's like the easiest spell to find? Except it occurs so much in the in the book that it maybe wasn't the easiest spell to find. There we go. Uh, rest until the. Blah, blah, blah. That should say failure. So they take 2d10 psychic damage. And are stunned on a failure. Uh, stunned until the start of the next, your next turn. On a failure, sorry. And... Take half as much damage and I'll stagger into the start of your next turn on a success. There we go. All right, chat. You can make it a field effect instead where the communication is enabled, but they need to be within the field instead of routing messages either through you or to all parts in the shared connection. Um, I could, it's true. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I just liked the idea of a limited number of connections um, because telepathy, being able to communi communicate with each other without you know, revealing battle plans or anything is kind of useful. And like, if you're being interrogated, you can share information and things like that. Um, but only being able to do it with so many people, I, I think, presents a nice challenge. Like, figuring out who, who would be best to, to communicate with. That's my th that's my reasoning, anyway. Obviously, it might be flawed. I am not perfect. As difficult as that may uh, be to believe. Uh... I just need to check something. Oops, nope, not that. That was the wrong bar on the page. So at 11th level, Eldritch Blast is 3d10 damage. So I'm happy with that. I might say at 17th level, it becomes 3d10 damage here. Just to make it viable telepathy is incredibly powerful the counter argument is mechanical justification for meta gaming for good or ill yeah but equally that's why i like the idea that you're restricted to who you can meta game with but i do want the telepathy because that's the scare eye side of things and also scare eye don't have the the field effect they're just one-to-one -one communication but because you're a warlock and you, you're bending the scare eye abilities, I was like, let's see how this goes and if it feels right. I think I've remember multiple games. Of sure thing. This is obviously not final tech, final draft stuff anyway. Uh, and you reach 17th level. Oh, I'll just do this. 
This feature's damage increases by 1d10 when you reach 17th level. There we go. This feathers, what? Just damage increases by 1d10 when you reach. I'm trying to figure out if that's needed. Stun means they can basically do nothing and attacks have advantage against them. But equally, I, I don't like features that don't scale. Although I guess the scaling here is your spell save DC increases. I'm going to leave it as it is for now, unless anyone in chat says anything else. Uh, connection to the other. This is, what, 14th level? The invocations I might do off stream as well, just to cut down on things. Or I could do them to start next stream. I don't mind. What are people in chat feeling? Because I probably won't have time to do all of them today. Yeah, 14th level. Oh, hello, cursor. Thank you. That was weird. At 14th level, uh, uh, tap into the connection that you share with the Skarai as a race, right? As a people, let's say as a people, I don't want to use the word race, um, has connotations that I'm trying to get away from in D&D material. And draw upon the knowledge. Uh, the Skarai is... <laughs> the Skarai are sentient, but the law indicates they were created by a being for a specific purpose. I'm sure Plastic Age players can clarify that. Uh, they are monstrosities, though, as well, which is another thing trying to get away from certain words with connotations. Uh, no, they, they do have a society. They're slavers. Um, they are apparently looking for something under Fenrilic. Their word is gone. It's not Eldritch. Uh, there is also absolutely... No indication whatsoever that uh, this is in fact the case. There's no indication there's even even a hive mind. But I'm going for that anyway. I'm drawing on the idea that they were created for some purpose. And that thing still lingers. There are individuals who communicate telepathically, not a high mind or anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, genetic memory, that was what I was thinking of. There we go. That's what I was trying to think of. Uh, my reasoning being entirely spurious, but if they don't actually have any visible uh, indications of rank or whatever and they re reproduce asexually there must be something going on that like gives them knowledge to begin with it's very weak reasoning but uh it's the reasoning i'm going with because it sounds cool uh as a reaction Taken before you roll a skill check. Ability check, not skill check. If we roll an ability check, you may expend one use of this feature to add 1d6 to the roll. You may use this feature. A number of times 
uh, equal to your... I'm going to tie into proficiency, I think. Well, it doesn't really increase after this level. Um, communicate to all the creatures in there simultaneously. I believe anything with telepathy is a language in 5e can as well. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know what? Uh, is that in the DMG or the monster manual? Because I can check that right now. You know what? It might actually be covered in the SRD. They might have actually put that in the SRD. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Because I, I have it open, so I can answer this question. Uh, telepathy is a magical ability that allows a monster to communicate mentally with another creature within a specified range. Don't need to share language, but have to be able to understand at least one language. A creature without telepathy can receive and respond. Telepathic monsters need to see them. They have to be in range. Uh, it's point to point. The contact is broken as soon as the two creatures are no longer within range of each other, or if the telepathic monster creates a different contacts a different creature within range. So, telepathy as an ability slash like language is point to point, but obviously it's up to the GM, and that might change. That might have different interpretations in Scarlands as well. And for this. I'll take Plastic Age Play's word as kind of the truth. Also, get out of here. That. There we go. You may spend one hit die without rolling it. To add 1d6 to the roll. Well, I guess Warlock hit die is d6 anyway, right? <laughs> Could just specify one Warlock hit die. Uh, I think this is a easy way of doing it, though. Uh, additionally, once per long rest, mm. Trying to think. I feel like a bodily transformation would take would expend hit dice. But how many? Trippy dramatic alters the way you've always approach mind flays and the like. Yeah, it's it's one of those things you never really have to think about as well, but that's why I checked. So that means, all that means is telepathy is just the message um, cantrip, really, but silent rather than having the the, the verbal component, vocal, 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 whatever. Anyway, uh, how many how many hit dice? Uh, I I feel five, maybe five. The third at this level. I love abilities that spend hit dice on use resource. Yeah, I uh, I implemented uh, magical tattoos in my home game. And um, to recharge them, it costs a hit die per spell level. And you, you're locked to um, a combined spell level of your proficiency bonus. Obviously, it's one way of doing it. Scarlet has its own magical tattoos, which you should totally check out if you have any um, curious about magical tattoos. Um, I think my, 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 my thing is just like, there are certain things on, that there are a decent number of things on the character sheet that you can expend. Why only expend them for one thing? I think five... Five is a third of the hit dice at this point. 
and it only drops down to a quarter when you hit level 20. Maybe three hit dice. So that still gives you a decent number to, to use. And you only regain half of them when you long rest. Uh, half of all of your expended hit dice, I should clarify for those who do not know. Also, for those who don't know, uh, to put into context why this is a choice that you'll be making. Um, when you take damage, you lower your hit points. Uh, you can expend hit dice during a short rest. So a hit dice... A uh, hit die is, the size of a hit die is determined by your class. So a warlock, I believe, is a d6. I could be wrong about that. I never actually checked. Uh, I know a wizard's is. Uh, Barbarian like is d12, fighter is d10, etc, etc. Uh, largely based on the, func on the position that your character is expected to be fulfilling in combat, like skirmisher, or frontline tank, or glass cannon. Uh, as is the case with wizards and oh, warlocks is d8. Interesting. Um, is it is it d is it sorcerer that's d6? I thought there were two spellcasters that were d6. But thank you for uh, correcting me, Tavern Tales podcast. Um, where was I? Yes. Uh, during a short rest, you may expend you may roll any number of hit dice up to a maximum, which is uh, no more than which is always the same as your uh, wasn't correction uh, this question? That is true. Thank you for the answer. Uh, it's always equal to your character level. Uh, it can be co it's, but it's like if you have levels in multiple classes, the combined total is your character level, and you have a number of hit dice in each class equal to your level in that class. Uh, anyway, that's more than you need to know. Uh, you roll a hit die. Uh, you add your constitution modifier to it. You regain that num that number of hit points. And then if you want to, if you want to gain more hit points, you do it again. Hit die, constitution modifier, gain more hit points, etc., etc. Um, but you only get half of your hit dice maximum back on a long rest. Um, so spending them excessively can leave you underprepared for later trouble, let's say. The communication is point to point, allow the implanted scare to rebroadcast all messages passing through to connect parties, much like your hub. But to require explicit connections to be established, also should the scarab be occupied as distracted to put to sleep, the communication network fails. Uh, uh, the the shtick is that the scarai is integrated with you, like you are one, but you retain, like it's not there anymore. You've just got its abilities and connection to itself. Uh, it is killed or otherwise rendered inert. There we go. It is definitely an idea, and I will copy it down. Um, to revisit this idea. I will have also just noticed the time, so I need to finish my, my thing. Uh, and get on. So chat, do you want me to do an in do you want me to do invocations on stream? I guess is the important question for chat. Uh, you may expend three hit dice and assume a Skerai hybrid form for one minute. Uh, during this minute, you gain Plus one to your AC as chitinous plates cover your body. And you gain uh, whenever you make it, uh, whenever you make an unarmed strike. Uh, the attack. Deals uh, 1d6 piercing damage. Is it 1d6 or d8 for Scarrow? Uh, sting. d8, sorry. Uh, the attack deals 1d8 piercing damage. Uh, it uses your strength or dexterity just for ease of use just to make this a, like a viable thing um I've got a dexterity ability modifier and any creature hit with it must succeed and uh 
on a, uh, at, must succeed at a, I think, if I can remember. Must succeed on a. No, uh, I'm gonna say at a constitution saving throw. Versus your spell save DC. Uh, where did chat go? Let's chat. Oh, telepathy is language works differently. It's telepathy is an ability. I do apologize. <laughs> Chuck it in the bin, silly. Uh, versus your spell save DC. Uh, where did that tech example text go? Now I'm just trying to get through this quickly so I don't overrun too badly and Travis doesn't quote unquote fire me. Whoop, too far. Uh, a creature takes, let's just tie it in again, uh, takes 1d8 poison damage on, and is staggered on a failure. You know what, let's, 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 let's bring it home. Let, let's, let's just m mimic the other one, but have it as a, the result of an attack. Another failure, or uh, takes half as much damage. I need. I know. I need to have a, a duration on this effect, and is staggered um, on a success. Okay, one plus one AC is Katniss plates. Uh, could be your body. You have advantage on intimidation checks. I'm not going to link that to an ability because it really other than like eleven hours for a stream. You know, you know that that is correct. Uh, but there we go. That's, you know, I appreciate the support. Deleted the wrong letter there. Whoops. Uh, you know what? No, I'll, I'll specify charisma. There we go. Termination charisma checks. And whenever you make an arm strike, the attack does 1d8 damage, uses your strength or dexterity ability modifier. That is a heckin' long sentence. You know what? Let's do this instead. During this minute, you gain the following benefits. Colon. Bullet pointed list, my friend. Friends, they are uh, they are the saving grace in, in in circumstances like this, or a saving grace, I should say. <laughs> Do something. Well, there's something which you lose hit dice. Okay, there we go. During, uh, does plus one AC feel weak? Should it be plus two? On the invocations, why not try some off stream and then we can look at it at the start of the next stream? Creativity on stream can be difficult. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Do some on, do some off. Because I'd like to give a decent number of them beyond just like three. So I might do... Um, uh, on Stable Dales, you're my heckler. It's a position closer than friend. It's within stabbing distance when you go too far. You know, I can reach somehow across the ocean. Uh... My feeling here is if I went to plus two AC, that mm, with everything else, Oops. you know what? Back to basics again. 
Scarrow. What do they do? Oh, I, I <laughs> keep your friends close. Hey, G Fire, I could give advantage spell resist magic resistance here, right? Would that make sense? Like limited spell resistance, like once. Uh, that seems unnecessarily harsh. Oh, what's the gnome thing? Uh, advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic or something. I just feel as a fourteenth level feature, this isn't. Great. Although I guess you do have a stun slash stagger chance every turn with it. Cool. Uh, advantage on intimidation charisma checks. Have advantage on saving throws of a spell. Yeah, I'm just going to take the, take the magic resistance check thing. <laughs> uh... You have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Oh yeah, I need to clarify this as a spell. Um, well, I guess it was being it's going to spell save DC. Maybe I should explicitly state this is a spell. This is a magical effect. Um, Uh... <laughs> I just looked down about, like, yes, you should hook people, and then banned. Uh... To keep it consistent, it kind of has been magical, right? Because Shattered Mind is a ranged spell attack. Yeah. Uh, this feature is a magical effect. Because I really, really uh, do not like it when a feature could be a magical effect. But it also could be a non-magical effect, and nothing is ever stated in the text about whether it is or isn't a magical effect. For the purposes of this, I'm using fear of saying it's it's magical effect. Since there is no meaningful difference between sonics and spells, yeah, I'm just gonna explicitly state it though for ease. I know I've had people try to quibble minor things that are probably magical, but there's enough leeway that they, that you could read read it as they aren't. Uh, but the phrase your friends teach you what you want to know and teach you what you need to know seems perhaps more relevant here. That's true. That's true. You're saying I don't know everything about this game on Stable Deus. Is that what you're saying right now? Like, I'd always assumed as that, that telepathy was like a, a blanket field thing. But no. Now it's point to point. It is a one person at a time thing. Actually, while we're on the subject of stupid telepathy rules... Um, the, the, the Barbarian that I'm playing in the game right now is a Kalashtar from Eberron. Well, the, the race... The, the Kalashtar her ancestry is from the Eberron book, but we're, we're in Faerun. I just wanted to play a Kalashtar. Um, and that one has a telepathy that is limited to, uh, like, your, your, your class level in feet. Uh, your character level in feet, sorry. It's, it's weird. And unnecessary. Uh, how much does counterspelling apply to the difference between psionics and magic? Uh, psionics aren't... You aren't casting a spell. You aren't expending a spell slot. Uh, usually. I mean, some do, obviously. In this case, no. Um, why am I in the monster manual section? 
so counter spell specifically states uh, you you cast it when a creature casts a spell. Um, casting a spell is a specific action in combat. This is the nitty gritty of the rules. Um, cast a spell is a specific action that you take in combat, and sometimes, uh, sometimes yes, uh, like some psionic stuff is just you're casting charm person suggestion. You're not derailing the streams. It's 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 a, it's a valid question, and I've got nothing else to talk about because I'm doing. I'll do the eldritch invocations at some other point. Um, some psionic stuff is yes, it's a spell that you cast. Um, but sometimes, equally, it's not a spell that you cast. Uh, mostly, the problem lies with the fact that wizards have really not cared about scions for P S I O N, not C S I O N, uh, for like the entire product lifetime of of D and D up until this point, and they've added what one psionic ancestry in the Gith. Two sub race, two 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 sub sub ancestries, or whatever you want to call it, heritages, um, and Tasha's includes um, some psionic stuff, and that's it. But I don't think the 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 psionic the psionic subclasses in Tasha's don't cast spells. Actually, thinking about it, they never actually say that you cast a spell. Uh, Anti-magic fields, um, if it's a magical effect, they do cancel it out. I mean, this is all obviously valid for the subclass. Um, uh, it's anti-magic zone, sorry. Whoops. Is there no hyphen? Did I... I unnecessarily hyphenated. Whoops. And now I typed ant-magic, which is a completely different spell. Uh, Anti-magic field. There we go. Spells can't be cast. Summon creatures disappear. Magic items become mundane. Spells and other magical effects, except those created by an artifact or a deity, are suppressed. So if it's a magical effect, which psionic stuff usually is, it's suppressed. Uh... But equally, and here's where it gets really annoying, uh, the stuff in Tasha's then it's not mag it, it never states whether it's magical or not. It just says you're psychic, you, you're, you're psionic. So I guess it's entirely up to the GM at that point. Unless it's somewhere that I haven't seen in the book. Which, you know, is entirely possible. Uh, I'd like to say more about Ant Magic. Tavern Tales Podcast, that's my, April Fool's, that's my April Fool's product for next year. So I hereby declare the official telepathy rules about one creature at a time really silly, therefore not in effect in Scarlands. You know what? When you produce an another, like, revision edition of the Scarlands Player's Guide, throw it in there. Also, uh, I would like to, before I do my, do my wrap-up, I would like to say, and obviously there's no pressure on this or anything, but when I when I was thinking about the Skerai stuff to, um, for today, I had a great idea for a rogue subclass that would fit Tamana, but unfortunately Tamana's not available yet, so please give us dangerous tropical rainforest. Anyway, outro. Um, today we have looked at how to make a warlock inspired by the scare eye. Um, mostly by focusing on two, th two strands of ability. Uh, offensive sonic capability in the forms of some spells. Shield, fracture, telekine telekinetic blast, telekinesis. Shattered mind, stunned mind, uh, mind lance for which 
I had to create a new condition. So, you know, again, try not to create conditions if you can avoid it, but I like to... I felt it was the simplest way of um, wrapping the features together. Uh, and the more utilitarian side of psionic ability of reinforcing your own mind through the strength and mind, th the shared mind thing, as well as obviously telepathy. Um, and being able to draw on Skerai genetic memory, because that seems cool, and I can't find a source in the book that says the Skerai don't have genetic memory. So, for the purpose of this, they do. Also, can you imagine, can you imagine, like, again, I, a lot of D&D stuff is not really, or Scarred Lands, OGL, like, well, let's say OGL, a lot of OGL stuff isn't really viewed with the how would I actually react if someone did this category? Um, it's more just, this is a cool thing. Like, if, you, if someone turning into a Skerai hybrid, I'd just run the other way entirely. You, I don't care how experienced an adventurer I am. That would just terrify me. Like, so th this person you've you've travelled with for presumably some time just turns into a half-scorpion monstrosity. And you're like, oh god, please don't. Anyway, the only component science requires brain. That is a good point. So, uh, outro. Uh, mentioned at the top of the episode, if you want to watch this after the fact, after it stops airing, <laughs> please please don't, Travis. Please don't. Um, or if you want to watch the beginning of it, or whatever you've missed, uh, and you are not a subscriber to the Onyx Path Twitch channel, uh, you will have to wait a week for this to go up on my YouTube channel. Um, please, if you want to find it there, I don't have a custom URL. Just search Comrade Bubbles. You'll find it. Um, if you are a subscriber, oh, uh, and obviously after that week is up, you can watch it on the, the Honest Path Twitch channel as well, uh, video on demand service. Um, if, you are, if you are a subscriber, you can watch it as soon as I'm done streaming and you have access to the emotes and a couple of other benefits like the Discord Ch um, channel for subscribers. I believe that's still a thing. Uh, unfortunately, I had to put my Prime Gaming subscription elsewhere this month. I have like a rotating thing of streamers I support with it, Onyx Path being one of them. Uh, the Monday meeting notes, as ever, is the best place to go for news on uh, Onyx Path products and plans. Uh, the virtual convention, for example, is still going ahead, just dis discussing what to put in it. Also, there's a breakdown of the art for the front cover of the current Kickstarter for Trinity Continuum Adventure. I know Nightbot posted the link at least once during that stream, but there's the link again. If you like the story path system, if you like punching Nazis whilst you have superpowers, check it out. Um, I will be streaming on my own channel in about 15 minutes. If you want to continue any conversations or follow me with any questions you may have, uh, that is also Comrade Bubbles. It, it's not tabletop related. I, I, I'm playing video games. Um, but it's, it's, it's a chill, inclusive place uh, that I hope people enjoy being. Uh, apart from Unstable Deus, who I don't care about, but is somehow a mod. That is a lie. His support, uh, Their support is incredibly appreciated. As is everyone's support on this channel, on this, on, on this, on this show. Everyone in chat right now, you are valued beyond words. Um... I'm also available to reach out to, to talk to you on Twitter. It's Comrade Bubbles again, can you tell? Could you guess? Um, oh, th thank you, Zach Rules. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the gift sub. Hope next month next month is back to the on month for Onyx Path. But I do, I do appreciate it nonetheless. Um, there is also the Onyx Path Discord, uh, where you can talk to fans for all of Onyx Path's game lines and, and ask questions. I lurk a lot, but if I can answer it, answer something, I will. Uh, I think that's it. So the the next thing on the channel is, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna get rid of that pop-up. You, uh, you, can, you can enjoy that. Uh, the next thing on the channel, according to my handy dandy schedule, is uh, Trinity Continuum Adventure Game by Warble Tales. Um, quite, late. That'll be what? 10 hours from now? Nine, 9 and 3 quarter hours from now? So you've got some time to hydrate, stretch your legs, get something to eat, that kind of thing. Um, 
please do stick around for the post roll. Uh, the post roll also includes all of the upcoming jump starts for Onyx Path games. Uh, I will be back next week. Sacrifice it. Oh, yes, Jorgman's Guide to Gale's Bad is now in print on demand. It's on my wish list. It should be on yours too, or in your cart already. I don't know. Um, I'll be back next week with some Pugmire. As I say, if appropriate sacrifices can be found, slash players found. Um, and then in two weeks' time, I will do Eldritch Invocations and start the Wizard uh, subclass. How many features do I need for the Wizard? I could potentially do all the Eldritch Invocations and the Wizard, maybe. Uh, I saw the pictures. It did look really pretty. Uh, I think that's it. So please do stick around for the post roll. If if you're interested in the jump starts, I think they're the second slide in the post roll slideshow. They are, so you don't even have to stick around for long. Um, I'll be in chat for a couple couple more minutes anyway. If you have any lingering questions, uh, or thoughts, comments, criticism, feedback, all of that stuff. But uh, from me to you and to your loved ones, please do stay stay safe. Please do stay healthy, and please do stay wholesome. I'll see you around. Hopefully, you can tune in again next time.